Greetings, it is I, Tantus Navran Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to get back to our discussion on Bessem, Big Eyes, Small Mouth, the role-playing game system. We're getting into some more rules of the system, and this time, we're getting into expanded game mechanics. I'm going to be talking a little bit about them. So let's start with combat maneuvers. You can. The first one I want to talk about is the ready action. The ready action means I choose to do something. I like say I'm going to do this in response to this. It's, it's setting up that if something should occur during the course of a turn, I'm preparing to do an action. Now the advantage of doing this is as soon as that sort of trigger happens, I can take my action. I'm doing it in response. But the disadvantage is whatever t initiative that, chain that happened on, I've changed that initiative. So I'm changing my initiative in return for sort of responding to something. After that's fighting with two weapons. Now you can fight with two weapons without having extra actions. What it will do is uh, it implies a penalty. So if I have two weapons in hand, if I would focus them on the same target, I get a minus three penalty to both my attacks. On the other hand, if I'm focusing them on different targets, I get minus six. And this means I don't have to have extra attacks to sort of get two attacks in, one with each hand. Now next is called shots. Called shots, there's a whole list of different types of called shots, and each of them has their own individual rules. The basics are, for a called shot, is you imply a penalty to your attack, and in turn get some kind of advantage. Whether it be something like ignoring armor, aiming for a weak point, they have an entire list of different types of called shots you can take. And you would choose whichever one you want to do at the time when you're using it. If you're using a called shot, you will specify before your roll which one you're using. You just have to remember to do that. Now you can also target multiple th creatures with a single attack. This would mean like if I'm making a sword swipe and for some reason I don't have extra actions and I'm surrounded by people, I could choose to hit multiple people with the same sword swipe. I could do that. But I start getting penalties. It's for it, You can have a maximum of five you can target. If you're targeting one, it's a normal attack. If you're targeting a second one, you get a minus three. If you're targeting a third person, you're getting a minus six. If you're targeting a fourth person, it's a minus twelve. And the fifth person, it's minus eighteen to hit five people with one attack. And this is assuming that this attack that's never not based around hitting multiple creatures. That's what it is. It's an attack that shouldn't normally hit multiple creatures, and you're choosing to have it target multiple creatures. Like you're shooting a gun through a couple of people. That's the same sort of thing. You would make one attack roll, and then each individual target would roll defense and figure out how each of them reacts to this one attack you've done. Now, you always have an option to strike to wound. What really this means is, anytime I'm making an attack on someone, I can voluntarily reduce the amount of damage I'm dealing to a minimum of one. Meaning I would always do one with an attack. But that would mean I could also, like, I can choose not to deal as much damage. So if I do a lot of attack and I don't want to kill this guy, and I don't know how many hit points he has, you know, I know that one hit might just cleave him in two sort of thing. I could choose to do a lot less damage and not just murder the dude. Now you can do a total attack. What a total attack means is I'm choosing to take a minus three to all my defensive rolls until my next turn, and in turn, I get plus three to a single attack. It's ba it basically means I'm like opening myself off to get one big attack in, just to make sure it is. I'm like opening up my defenses to sort of hit someone. And finally, the last, basic, the last combat maneuver I want to go on is the attack to touch. Now the attack to touch, it comes in when you're using certain abilities that you have. Like something might say that you have as, a, as, a, as, as some kind of power that you have to touch them. That's when you're targeting, trying to just touch someone. At that point in time, you have plus three to attack. Now you're not like holding on to them, you're just trying to touch them. You're not trying to really super penetrate their defenses. It's again, it's just a single touch, hence you get plus three to do it. So let's move on and let's talk about another big section in this area, grappling. Now grappling is something you can do to basically hold on to someone, hold them down. When you make a check to grapple, you're using your unarmed attack. And you're going against their normal defenses and you're attempting to sort of grab onto them. Now for every free hand you get, including if you have more than two hands, the defender gets penalties to try to defend against this attack. Also if you have things like a very high body, or super strength, or the person itself is very weak for whatever reason, these can give penalties to either side and attempts to sort of controlling a grapple. Once you have a hold of a person, then of course they are pretty much can't move. They're sort of stuck in place next to you. And they receive penalties to things like attack and defensive rolls and any kind of check that doesn't involve escaping from your grapple. So they kind of get penalties because they're being held on to you by you unless they're trying to escape. Now once you're grappling someone, you can do something, you can do a couple maneuvers yourself. You can lock on to them, meaning you're kind of holding them tighter and you're automatically doing unarmed damage. You can throw them down, meaning you throw them to the ground and get them prone. 
you can of course pin them, which would be setting them up to like sort of bind them, to kind of carry them, to keep them from moving whatsoever, and sort of even like resisting you. Now of course, the person you're going against always has the option to escape. Now they can do a couple other things. The, the person you're kind of holding on to, they have the option of trying to bite you. <laughs> That's one of those things. You're holding on to them, you're in a position, they can always try to bite. You can bite in a grapple. Uh, you can fight when you're both prone on the ground. If someone's lying on the ground, like if you throw them down and you're still like holding on to them, they can fight while on the ground. Of course, they receive penalties for this because they're sort of in a bad position to combat, but you can keep trying to fighting. And then this can apply to any time you're sort of dropped to the ground. But, like, throwing them down is the main time you're probably going to drop down. When you're down, you receive a minus three penalty for fighting on the ground. That's a pretty significant penalty. So, and the last thing you can do, so, uh, this is another little maneuver that someone while grappling can do, is you can attempt to disarm someone while grappling them. Uh, you, again, it's sort of it more opposed checks, again, against their defense, but you're attempting to sort of rip their weapon away from them. So the last thing I want to talk about today is I want to just dive into a little bit about vehicle actions and vehicles in general during your combat, during play. Now, vehicles, when you're using them, they have their own rules about how fast they go. You're going to be making checks. It's going to be against targeted DCs that your game master is going to tell you. So they'll, the game master will tell you, this is the DC. You're going to make either like a drive or pilot check or a boating check to see how well you succeed at that, if you do at all. Uh, failure to do so, depending on the circumstance, could mean certain things. Like during chase scenes, if you fail to make a check, it means they're catching up to you. On the other hand, doing certain maneuvers and you're trying to do them, it could mean crashing. They actually just give a section where they talk about doing wild stunts, where you're doing something crazy, where the most likely result of failure to do that is going to be a crash. And, they, and the average DC for those is DC 12. Uh, that's a wild maneuver. You're going to assume you at least have to get a 12 for your DC, if not higher, depending on what kind of wild maneuver it is. And when you're doing some kind of vehicle or scene, depending on if you're just, depending on where you're trying to get, you want to keep track of how far they're moving, how far they've moved, you know, distances between two vehicles, if it's some kind of vehicle chase or some kind of scene involving more than one vehicle, whether combat or not, you're definitely going to want to keep track of where they are positioned in the world. So that's it for today. I've gone over some combat maneuvers, I've gone over the basics of grappling, and I've given you a little basics of using vehicles in your scenes. So if there's any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I missed, please leave in the comments below. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. It's a great way of showing your support for the channel and the Empire. Please subscribe if you already have it. We're always looking for more members, more citizens of the Empire, and please share this video. If you know anybody that could learn anything from it, or would just enjoy watching it. And until the next time, I bid you farewell.